Did anybody from everybody get consent? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I forgot you asked. Okay, okay. All right, this house prefers a strong dictatorship to a weak democracy. Now, what we mean by that is that a stable dictatorship versus an unstable democracy. If we have a person who is in power running a relatively stable uh, country, we do not believe it is worth it to try to replace that with a weak and unstable democracy. Now, this is a values debate first and foremost, but we don't believe that we can attack really values without looking at the policy impacts of it. So if we want to debate policy as well, which we're going to end up doing, I think the policy implication of this is that taking out a stable monarchy and replacing it with a weak democracy isn't worth it. It's not worth it for foreign powers, uh, such as the United States and others, to take out monarchs uh, for a democracy that we are going to argue does not work. Now, it's very important that we define our standard of value, and we're not going to define the House as any specific body of people, either inside or outside, because we want to look at the, the impact on the entire world, as we're going to see very soon with foreign policy that is very relevant. Now, a lot of people um, go out and support democracy as the good, or say that a good government is democratic. And it's very important to define what the goal of a government is. And that is to uh, promote human flourishing. And a democracy does not always get it right. I think the reason that a lot of times we like democracy is the, the reason that maybe if a monarchy gets it right five times out of ten, then the democracy gets it right seven times out of ten if we look to examples such as the United States that are very stable democracies. And that's why it's preferable. We need to be very clear. Decisions and governance is not right or wrong because of the type of government it is. A type of, um, a, you know, a condition under democracy isn't inherently better than the exact same condition under a monarchy or vice versa. We need to go with whatever creates the best outcome for the most people. And we believe it's very important to recognize that democracy is not an end in itself. Now, we are filled with examples all throughout history in which we can see that uh, while stable, very stable constitutional republics may work, unstable democracies lead to impacts and harms far, far, far greater than that of stable monarchies. Um, historically, one of the first examples we have in the United States, which under the leadership of Hamilton had a very strong centralized government as opposed to the French Revolution, which was far more lower de-democratic and it ended up creating far, far more bloodshed because of that specifically because they took what was a relatively stable monarchy that had flaws and replaced it with something that was far worse. And to add insult to injury, their small democracy did not lead, or, or their weak democracy did not lead to a stronger democracy. Their weak democracy did not lead to a constitutional republic. It led to authoritarian backlash and radicalism on the other side. And it led to a loss of human life, which is the kind of impacts we're talking about here, that was so much, so much worse than what the French um, had under any of their monarchs. And um, what, one of the important things that I want to weave into here principle-wise is that monarchy favors longer time horizons than a weak democracy. Because monarchs can be a lot of things, many of them bad, but they aren't suicidal. And this is going to be very important now more than ever, because this kind of absolute collapse, uh, Europe had a relatively stable uh, rulership for a very, very long time. And then with the rise of some of these weak democracies in the 20th century, experienced some of its worst bloodshed ever. Let's talk about this example. Um, the, the, in Germany, the Kaiser was probably not a great guy. But what did we have afterwards? The, uh, he was not aggressive. For over 25 years leading into 1914, there were no aggressive military expansions. And there was um, relative stability in Europe for that entire period of time after the Napoleonic Wars. Then what happens is um, at, the, uh, at the Treaty of Versailles, we decide America and, and several other countries decide this is great, we'll turn them into a democracy, we'll turn them into a republic. What ends up happening is this sort of weak, unstable democracy leads to radical parties. Of course, there were multiple radical parties at the time. The, the one that won out ended up being the Nazi party. But if they lost, it wasn't this great, stable democracy party. No, if, if the Nazis lost, then the, the Marxists probably would have won. So we end up with a system where it leads to a situation where all the people who are, are fighting for control are the radicals. It lends up lead, uh, leading to that. And these people had no long time horizon. They didn't care about the long-term stability of the state. And they were very willing to sacrifice resources that they never had connections to that 25 or 30 years into the future, they wouldn't have to deal with the repercussions of that. 
if, if, if anything, um, if anything is true, it's that monarchs want to preserve the, uh, their claim to the throne, and a dictatorship wants to make sure the country doesn't fall apart in two or three years' time. And we cannot say the same for a weak democracy and the many factions and political parties that come to strength through it. Um, and finally, I want to talk about a, a, our final political example, which is U United States foreign policy and colonialism. How the United States uses the idea of democracy, and other um, Western nations have used the idea of democracy to justify taking out, you know, so-called dictators and creating problems even worse. Taking out dictators and leading to um, weak democracies have, has led to the rise in Iran of, or uh, across the Middle East of. Um, Islamic theocracy, and more importantly, recently, we, we, we opposed um, dictators in Libya and, of course, Assad in Syria, and it ended up accidentally funding ISIS, because that's where a lot of the weapons from the quote-unquote freedom fighters democracy fell to. So we need to realize that although these places are probably not uh, fantastic places to live, it's far better than when it goes to a weak democracy and these arms fall into the hands of far worse people with far shorter time horizons that there are far worse impacts than a democracy than a monarchy, and uh, far worse places the world can work. And the traditional mechanisms aren't um, the worst. And we can look at this very simple for, you, uh, for history. No one in their right mind would really want to live, uh, would decided that um, the, the system in Europe in the 17th century or 18th century was the greatest. But as soon as you flip the page to the 20th century and see that that is the biggest loss of life ever and it corresponds with the rise of these weak democracies and it corresponds to these strong leaders and where, where their family led a nation in relative stability for centuries being to, um, taken out and replaced with people who didn't have that kind of connection, all of a sudden we see that horrific, horrific loss of life. It's very clear that the impacts are way worse. When we come um, even to present day, we see situations in which traditional arms are even worse. And it's not just a matter of oppressing their own people, but with nuclear weapons and even more advanced weaponry. If this falls into the hands of an unstable regime with no time horizons or very short time horizons, we can have that suicidal behavior that we would never have under a monarchy and it can threaten world uh, stability and security. Thank you. We take the time to start and call upon the leader of your position. Take care. Without having an opportunity to make own choices, a human will not be 
able to become happy even if you have all the proper resources, economical resources, mining, workplace, for example, infrastructure, the human will not be happy. Why? But because the nature of a human supposes that the person cannot enjoy things they don't want to do, even if these things are beneficial for others or even if these things bring them life. Why? Because people usually uh, try to self-actualize or, or we can call it feel useful in their own way. Mining and economical success is one way to feel useful, is one way to feel successful, is one way to feel self-actualized. However, it does not work for all people. We believe that for the vast majority of people, uh, it is not sufficient to just have economical resources in order to feel self-actualized, in order to feel better. We believe that for the vast majority of people, it can be self-expression, it can be exercise of their own rights, exercise of their own opinion, freedom of speech, freedom of choice, which is more important for them in order to do whatever they want. We believe that it is proven on example of many conservative states, of many conservative countries, where levels of suicide are much higher than in democracies, where people don't want to continue their life because they can't live their life as they want. And we believe that when a person feels suppressed by social hierarchy, when a person feels suppressed by dictatorial rules, a person becomes desperate because he never feels satisfaction from their actions. If they don't believe that what they are doing in this state and what they are allowed to do in this state is beneficial and is satisfactory, they are never able to feel satisfaction in their life, and this is why their life brings them no happiness at all. Yes? Yeah, conflating democracy with personal freedom. And as we pointed out, there are lots of cases where personal freedom and safety has declined under the collapse of the monarchy. And the, all this hand waving doesn't really prove anything, that it gets worse. Uh, if you say that personal freedom decreased just because people died in the transitional period, it is not a comparison. We believe that personal choices are never. Uh, the democracies are based on the fact that they are trying to provide people choices and try to give people a right to choose what they want. But by the monarchy never does it because monarchy pursues the uh, wishes of mostly one person or one family of persons, for example. And we believe that they, these choices are mostly do not coincide with the choices of many people. So, uh, also, what we are saying? Uh, we say that in, in weak democracies, a person is able to at least attempt and to some extent support the things that, they, that make him happy, that, the things that uh, he considers to be important, whether it's LGBT acceptance, whether it's free choice of workplace, whatever it is, people are able to do some uh, actions which they consider to be useful if, and which by that, by feeling useful, makes them happy. We believe this is an important action for people and this, this is where people feel happier and this is where people feel question. Uh, yes. If I want something, I choose it, but the government doesn't have enough political capital in order to fulfill it. Will I feel myself happy? You can at least pursue your goal, you can at least make minor changes, you can make attempts and you can make uh, gradual improvements in your goal and you can see that you are really trying to achieve your aim. Whether, when you are not allowed to achieve your aim at all, it makes you much less satisfied on comparison uh, of this world. Why weak democracy has more potential in the future? We believe that why weak democracy can be in the future transformed to strong democracy. When you try to collect your political capital, when you try to develop and take some time to develop economically, you have a tendency to uh, transform to strong democracy. However, the only choice for strong dictatorship is either to fail or turn into weak democracy. What is it that you cannot compare it? Well, that you cannot say that the strong dictatorship will some, somehow become a strong strong democracy without the transition to weak democracy. So we believe that strong dictatorship has no future potential because it in most cases fails and turns into the weak democracy. So we believe that in order to compare this debate, in order to uh, show for us, you know, in order for us to win, we should show where a human individual will become more happy, where, where a human individual, individual will become more satisfied with his life, and we believe that good democracy has more potential for individual to pursue his own choices, to pursue his own rights, and uh, this is why we are proud of it. We thank the leader of the opposition, and to conclude the open government's case, we call on the deputy prime minister. Good afternoon.
opposition team made one fatal flaw in their last speech, and that is that they completely ignored all of the analysis on very real world examples that my partner brought up by simply brushing these off and saying simply, this was a transitional period. I think this is a fatal mistake on their hand because there's no such thing as a transitional period. Where in history have you ever seen some country classified as being in a transitional period? This is nothing in, that would actually occur in real life. We've shown you an example of where in history these have actually occurred, what has happened, and how they have resulted in many negative effects. Now, just to understand this on a more principle level, Simply speaking, a democracy is someone, uh, a location where an individual has the right to vote, the right to have free speech, the right to choose their leadership. All of these things constitute a democracy. So a country that is developing these types of ideas would be very like, clearly considered a developing democracy or a weak democracy. I think that they simply rebrand this idea of a weak democracy by calling it something else, where they really don't look at the actual arguments that we've brought up in today's debate right? I think that these arguments are still very principally applicable in today's debate around, and the fact that these countries were attempting to uh, develop democratically, develop with democracy in mind, shows that they were weak democracies. If we were to accept their definition, there would be no such thing as a weak democracy ever, because we would only have strong democracies under their interpretation. Um, with that being said, I think that we also need to understand like, the systemic effects of what happens in a weak democracy. My partner pointed out three specific examples of where when a democracy is attempting to be formed, uh, most often in these three specific examples, this opens the doors and gives the possibility for a leader that is absolutely negative, that has absolutely far worse consequences, to come in and take over. Many examples. We see that specifically Napoleon was worse than Louis. Louis, we see that Hitler was worse than Kaiser. All these examples where an individual was attempting to create a democracy, and because it was too weak, because it was ineffective, uh, an authoritarian regime came in, took over, and killed millions of people. This is absolutely not something that we want, and they fail to respond to this logic and these arguments that my partner brought up. I think these arguments alone are arguments to vote for the government team. When we see a situation where under opposition ballot, you're going to see a, like 10 times more deaths, if not many more. Millions of deaths would occur if we were to simply say that weak democracies are much better than a strong dictatorship. Stability is the most important thing because here I think my partner very clearly established this last week. She talked a little about stability and its importance within a government. The most important thing for human flourishing, for human safety, is to have stability. When a country is constantly going through changes in leadership, changes in policies, changes in political like regimes, we see that the people within those countries are not protected. They're oftentimes killed, they're oftentimes discriminated against. Many things happen to people in a country that is constantly in transition. But oftentimes when we look at a dictatorship, although some people might be harmed, although a dictatorship might not be perfect for every individual in that country, we don't see that these people are being continually isolated, continually open to the opportunity of an authoritarian regime coming in, taking them out, and killing millions of people like we saw with Hitler in Germany. This is a prime example of somewhere where a weak democracy or an attempt at democracy resulted in a regime that had not the best interests of the people in mind. So even if a strong dictatorship doesn't necessarily have the possibility to be perfect for every single individual, it has the possibility to help more individuals than would a weak democracy. So with that being said, let's look into their matter. I have a few responses. The first argument they bring up is this idea that you know democracy tries to pursue people's rights. It gives people the rights to have their their own their own ideas, their own thoughts, their own opinion about leadership, about governmental policies. We completely agree that this is true. However, actually attaining that level of democracy where people have free speech, where people have the ability to choose, is very difficult to get to. In fact, the United States is a prime example of where democracy is still in like development. Like democracy is never going to be perfect. So like there's always going to be people that are yeah, isolated. Like if you look at the United States, for example, like people in the LGBTQ community, people that are of different races are still discriminated against to this day simply because of their the way they are, like not because of any legitimate reason. So even in a democratic society, like a, a democratic society that's looked at by most of the world as an almost perfect democratic society, you're not going to have perfection. Like people are still going to be undermined. People are still going to be marginalized based off of their race, ethnicity, religion, their, their sexual orientation, any of these things. People are still going to be marginalized to some extent, so we shouldn't simply say that taking a chance and having a weak democracy is way more worth it than having a strong dictatorship where stability is existing. I'd also like to point out that they didn't bring up any examples in their speeches of like real world examples of like where this has actually occurred and where it's actually been beneficial, where in our side we do have multiple examples. I think that the key distinction on a principal level uh, between a democracy 
and a, uh, a dictatorship is this idea of loyalty. And I think we need to understand the, like, the nationalism and loyalty that comes along with a dictatorship versus a, um, a, a democracy. If you look to a, a democracy, it's often built off of an idea of race, religion, uh, ethnic group, some sort of idea that is commonly held by many people that brings them all together, right? So they're all believing in one thing, they have a strong belief about that idea or that point of view, which creates this, this nationalism, it creates this idea where people become even more so divided, whereas in, under a dictatorship, the loyalty is not to one race, it's not to one religion, it's not to one specific idea about how one individual should be sexually oriented, but rather it's about a, a, a loyalty to a king, which is much more stable, it will create much more peace where, rather than having like this sectionalism where we have individuals supporting one specific idea and isolating that idea from other ideas around the world. I think this on a principal level is a reason to vote for the government team. But the next argument that they bring up is like this, this idea that we can support the important things that people actually care about under a democracy, that people can do things that make them happy. And although that might be true in the short term under a weak democracy, in the long term we see that sh like these weak democracies don't end up in strong democracies. We see maybe one or two examples ever of where a weak democracy was able to transition into a strong democracy effectively. But in most cases, nine times out of ten, we see that a weak democracy simply opens the door for someone who has bad ideas in mind, who has bad motives in mind, to come in, take over, and actually hurt these people. So although they might get short-term gratification, although I might be able to not pay taxes, although I might be able to marry my brother, although I might be able to do something completely free for a few months during this quote-unquote transitional period, as they call it, we see that after those few months, under a dictatorship, we are under, like, not a dictatorship, an authoritarian regime, we're going to be much more restricted. We won't have enough political capital to actually achieve these real-world goals and accomplish, like, and change real-world problems once we see a government that's, like, literally killing its own civilians, as we've seen in many different cases. So it is for all these reasons, I think that a government ballot is mandated. Not just because of the political examples in the past, not just because of what has actually happened, but because on a principal level, a democracy is not going to ever beat a strong dictatorship. A weak democracy would never beat it, and it's for these reasons that I ask the government about. Thank you. We thank the deputy prime minister and call upon the deputy leader of the opposition. Here, here. Germany, uh, Mao Zedong, well, not Mao Zedong, yes, China under, under the dictatorship. 
dictatorship was founded in was almost 30 percent of its of its citizens because of the dictatorship, because the dictatorship was threatened these people and doesn't want these people to live in their state, so they decided that the best way to deal with these people was to kill them, and they have nothing like uh, nothing to stop them from doing this because people in the state has like has no power to somehow affect affect their leaders. Uh, it's very difficult to get to a strong democracy. Well, yes, it's very difficult, but it's not the reason not to reject like this idea of strong democracy. And we understand that in big democracy we have much higher chances of, of once achieving this strong, strong democracy in the case of like, the, for example, strong dictatorship, where the leader of the dictatorship is, uh, is mostly interested in keeping this power in the hand of his party or in his or her party or in the, his or her family. Yes, therefore, like, they simply uh, give up on the idea of mm, becoming to, like, of achieving this strong democracy, uh, but in our case, we at least uh, leave this opportunity for the individuals in this big democracy to achieve this strong democracy. And dictatorship is about diversity of opinion, sorry. Well, sounds like a kind of absurd idea, because in dictatorship, you're even more exposed to, uh, to share the same ideas and same beliefs, because I, like, I will explain later in my speech. Uh, so, proceeding to my speech, I will explain two main things. Why individual life is the most important matter in this debate, and I will provide a uh, little detailed comparison of this political regime. Uh, so, why individual life is the most important matter in this debate? Because both dictatorship and democracy once was uh, once created and socially accepted as a system of government because they, they were believed to improve individuals' life. But there is one important difference. Dictatorships strive for material comfort at the cost of in, uh, individual agencies, while democracy considers individuals' life to be the highest value even at the cost of some material benefits. And here we already see the systematic, the systematic failure of the dictatorship and the political regimes for the people. So let's compare it like this political regime in even more details. Yes? Again, we believe that individual's life is, def uh, uh, is defined in terms of individual's dignity, agency, freedom, and self-realization. Yes, it's not material thing, but it is something that can be achieved via material thing, but not necessarily requires all this material thing. And this thing, uh, so, okay. Yeah, it was Woodrow Wilson's 14 points and the reshaping of Germany or reshaping of Europe around these sort of ethnic and nationalist lines of democracy is what caused all the hatred and race hatred that led into World War II. This is exactly what kind of caused the kind of effects you're trying to put on. So after all this stupid Woodrow decision, we understand how we shouldn't build our big democracy now. We have this lesson and we will not do this, do this again. So what we say is that in contrast to opening government, we will not seem to represent successful and failed examples of weak democracy and strong dictators. Our people will systematically compare this political regime on the metrics of human life. While strong dictatorship may, in the best case scenario, provide individuals with material means to feel comfortable, again, in base case scenario, yes, if the strong like the leader of the strong dictatorship is actually interested in uh, satisfying at least the major like uh, the demands of the majority. Uh, uh, these regions will never be able to uh, make individuals feel secure and happy. For quite a simple reason, yeah? because self-expression, few reasons, uh, one reason, because self-expression through any way, whether it is religion, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, career ambition, like anything, like any factor that you can choose uh, as a self-expression will not be achieved in the dictatorship. Because there is a systematic feature that 
and they are pressing down. So proud of you. Next, I'll talk about so say choice is 
not fulfilled in here. But why do we believe the problem of choice is not relevant when we're talking about strong democracy, strong uh, uh, dictatorship? When we're talking about strong dictatorship, we need to understand that there is a really strong government, a really strong government that controls everything, that controls the media, that controls the school, that controls the way people are educated from the very beginning, and, and actually dictates the way and dictates the moral codex of how people should behave, of what it is to be a good citizen. And you don't even have an idea of why I should exercise my right. You don't have this idea. And actually, you, uh, when you think about your suffering, why should, why should I do this? Why should like, I tolerate this government? You actually refer to the idea that was taught to you from the very beginning. So actually, you have to abide because no, there is some ideology. <laughs> there is some cult, cult of dictator. There is some national pride. There are some national interests that are more important than your own personal interest, and you need to sacrifice yourself in order for these interests to be fulfilled. What's really more important to understand is about minorities. We are saying that these minorities will only suffer if they, you know, go against the existing government, if they go against the existing system. But when they abide it, they are, and when they are into the system, they are allowed to receive all these benefits that are coming from a strong dictatorship, and, and they, as, as they were already pointed, upon, pointed out that actually this, this government no, is prospering and that actually these people are receiving all the rights that is required for them. Also, we believe that on the side of the house, people. Uh, uh, oh, okay, uh, so we, we, we need to understand that uh, actually, uh, in here it's more, it's uh, really important to say that government is. No, no, no. Government is not uh, secure in, in here because, we are, as I was talking, we need to suppress this opposition. We need to suppress these people who are going against the will of majority because they're provoking some, uh, because they're provoking some conflicts. And we need a mechanism to suppress these people no, who go against the system. But what is really more important is that in the big democracy, there will be all, there will always be rights. There will always will be people who feel unsatisfied with the current regime, and this government is stagnated, and they want a mechanism to actually change this power. And what's really important to understand is that actually they fail to prove that this big democracy will be turned into a strong democracy in democratic ways. As I said, there will be riots, there will be revolutions, there will be uh, a useful force in order to change the power. And actually a peaceful change of force, is, uh, transfer of force is only uh, is only uh, existent in, not existent in their case. And therefore uh, the, the democracy is fundamentally failing if it's not allowing for people to have a success in that way. And also what we're talking about is that actually uh, we government is able to uh, in, uh, external interventions of uh, if they don't have like enough the enough media enough information sovereignty they can be attacked by other governments they can be external revolution for example from strong states etc <coughs> etc et why because this state sees that this is the government we can use it we can turn these people we can use our ideology we can use uh, in an information war and actually makes these people believe our ideology makes them believe that their government is bad makes them and change the government and in, in order to satisfy their own political will and to extract as much as possible from this country uh, as it is. So, uh, for the reasons mentioned above, we truly prove is that actually strong, uh, the strong dictatorship are better in many, many ways than big democracy. Uh, thank you for your attention. We thank the member of the government and we call upon the member of the opposition here. here. Thank you. 
you went, for example, who, who has different, for example, uh, its own, uh, for example, UN Women in Kazakhstan, UNDP, a lot of these NGOs that can help to make this uh, democracy, to make the states better, for example. About the corruption, corruption is everywhere, I believe, and this is a very uh, debatable argument, and it's the scale that I already talked about is different in, um, in most of these cases. And it can be fought against, at least in weak democracies. For example, in Ukraine, they have a special uh, program that shows where this, uh, when a construction uh, uh, companies wants to get a tender, wins, and where this money goes, and all of these things can be controlled, at least. Whereas in the, uh, the, the, where in the democracy, dictatorships, you can't control all of these things, for example. And also about the moral codex and etc. that at least like education, the central authority that we allocate, etc. Whether it is efficient, the question is uh, being asked. Whether these people really want to be a doctor, whether these people, for example, after finishing uh, uh, high school, still want to be, for example, the government never asks this, and this just pushes people like a robots from one, you finish school, now university, now etc. 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 at this point. About the cult of dictator, the question is where did it end up good? Where because of this cult of dictator, a lot of people died. For example, if your art is done, your dictator and your party doesn't like your art, basically you can be executed, for example. This is unjustified, like without trial murders, which we don't which don't lead to anything good. Also about the uh, idea of majority and her interest and my interest, I believe that uh, when you perceive what in the society only a majority's interest, it leads to a stagnation where there is no competition, where everyone still stays, everything feels okay, then nothing develops basically. And when there is a, uh, you want to be the best, you want to know, you want to get benefits a lot, you will try to develop. For example, if I want to uh, make a lot of profit, for example, it's a basic concept, I believe, and it's pretty clear that it will be more de development, for example. If I want to be better than her, I have to make a better product, and etc. It's, be it's better for uh, society rather than one monopoly, which, for example, has a higher price, and etc. Et also about the opposition. And we won't have the stagnation in political uh, means as well. When we have only one party which dictates everything, and in most of the cases it's a military elite which wants to do whatever it wants, actually, and when we have the pluralism of ideas, different parties, for example, uh, social party or like liberal party, and different parties which can actually uh, have different vectors of development and people can choose while they are voting for which uh, path of the pattern they want to go rather than one, maybe in an efficient way. Also about the intervention, we believe that we are living in a modern world where we have international laws and no one come to, can come to your country and do whatever they want, for example. And uh, I believe that this case is a little bit irrelevant. So today what we want to talk about is the benefit for individual in, turn in three of the aspects. It's political, economically, and socially, and how it will end up. And we believe that the uh, dictatorship, like how many dictatorships are left right now in the world? We can see a lot of examples that they actually failed, for example, and how people actually uh, struggled in there, and how we can see a big example of USSR, a lot of countries which actually, at the end, uh, everything collapsed and nothing ended up good. And I think that history, uh, like, we know what is better, and these conditions never satisfied us. And talking about the political, as already um, it was said on the first half of the game, about the rights, and we believe that one of the most symbolic things that happened in the uh, history which shows that the uh, dictatorship is inefficient and whether it's better to choose it, at least with democracy is a fall of the Berlin Wall. <coughs> people wanted to get out of this, uh, of this uh, Soviet Germany and wanted to go to the, this liberal free, at least even if we after the war, they wanted to do this. They didn't want to live in this dictatorship because they know what is, they don't have a right, they can't uh, choose, they, um, for example, in Cuba, how people live, for example, under the Fidel Castro's rule, they didn't have any political uh, will, for example, political rights, and at least an economic rights. For example, whereas in weak democracy, even if you don't have political rights and you have this like a one president who rules for 20 years, you at least have economic uh, economic freedom where uh, you can have, for you can be a businessman, you can develop a business, you can have these ideas. Even if there is one, he still tries to develop at least to stay in one position. He will try to develop, for example, the country in order to stay, basically, what we want to talk about. And economically, is that this inefficient system is of central planning is very inefficient because they don't know uh, what uh, market, what people want to do, and people usually do what they don't like and what they are not satisfied with. Whereas we can see the competition and development, and we can see the stagnation in this dictatorship, both politically and economically and socially, we believe there is a fear um, in the society where people don't want to live 
under this rule, as it was seen in the examples where overthrew in Arab Spring, for example, countries where they didn't want to live in these dictatorships. Whereas in weak democracy, you don't have a fear, but you already know, for example, yeah, but he will get to win. But at least I have this economic freedom, at least I have certain institutions and means that I can go to and change something. The same with the media, whereas you are brainwashed and uh, saying that your country is the best and you don't like know a lot more about others. And here you have at least some competitive media who can tell you a little more information or can actually push for a development. This is what we are talking about. With democracy, we can refer it uh, because it is a matter of time. Uh, it can become a better version of democracy and lead to it, whereas strong dictatorship in the long term will collapse. And uh, people already, we, could, we saw a lot of examples in the history and we believe that it is not uh, efficient at all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that speech. And we call upon the government with the, the government side.
what is it with democracy? Today we have like such a uh, such a thing as a social demand. So actually, when the social demand is not uh, how to say is not um, satisfied, yes, it's not satisfied. Uh, that means that the government side, actually, democracy is all about citizens' right, about their right of choice, about their uh, freedoms, about their willings. We have to understand that in this case, uh, when the social demand is not, uh, the weak democracy is, is when like, the social demand is not fulfilled uh, in the like, in, in large scale. We have to understand in this case, people won't be happy as our dear op opposition side claims us. They will be happy, there will be like disabilities and things like that. We're not talking about the strong democracies where the government can give you, can provide you with all of the possibilities all of the possibilities you might uh, use, all of the necessary things you might need to, uh, to fulfill your ambitions. We have to understand that in this case, in the case of democ in good democracy, uh, the government is not like a guarantee to give you, like they, uh, they can act, they easily cannot like uh, provide you with everything you need. They can give you access to um, uh, your needs. So next point, uh, talking about the, our own case today, in this game, uh, my colleague um, gave a big impact to this whole game of rights. Today we talk about the control. Again, when the, uh, how to say, when the whole power is in one hand, it is more likely to be like centralized, system, systemized, that uh, not, not like other like, institutions will interfere or something like this. So why do weak democracies actually are the weak democracies? Because there are some maybe discords and opinions, discords and disagreements or something like this. We have to understand that when the power is on one hand, that means that like the one person and maybe some kind of uh, private institutions are in charge of the whole, uh, you know, um, whole, oh my god, the whole situation in the country. So that means that when we have this control, when we have the control over the media, when we have control over like uh, all of the institutions of the country, that means that uh, this control will be like in one hand, and that's the good thing. Uh, also, uh, today we're talking about choice. Today we're talking about the thing that uh, in some cases, of course, we respect the right of choice as uh, the right of choice of every single individual, but we have to understand that sometimes we have to self-sacrifice ourselves, self-sacrifice our own like uh, rights or something like this in the name of the bigger, like, you know, bigger prosperity, in the, big, uh, in the name of the well-being of the whole society we live in. Uh, because if the society will be happy, like majorly, okay, we of course we have to, you know, sacrifice some minorities. That that's not like um, like not a secret. We still have to do it. But uh, if the majority will be happy, like we will live in a country with a bigger prosperity. Next thing, um, uh, why in democracy? Uh, why in the case of democracy, the happiness won't be achieved? Today, uh, our opponents say that uh, in case of uh, democracy, we will have more possibilities and more choices so we can be happy. But actually, we have to understand that there are two reasons why we won't be happy. Because of the money uh, aspect, because uh, with, uh, with democracy is not able to finance all our needs. And also, about uh, let's not forget about the other concerns that governments have. Like, for example, they have their own social concerns about like uh, discrimination questions or like ISIS questions, something like this. So we have to understand that in these cases, uh, they won't be like uh, fulfilled in a uh, larger scale. Thank you. We thank the government as well. This concludes the government side. We call upon the opposition way to conclude this debate. Here, here. Why? Because we should understand that uh, 
the, 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 these ideas was like some new ideas for the citizens. And in this case, when this when they appear in the France or something like that, the people also don't know how to use this. So, the, however, the people trying to find a better way to develop their country. And today we're seeing that the France one of the developing country in the world and the one of the powerful democracy in the world. Moreover, we should understand that as I said before, that every regime have their evaluation. Uh, they have their evolution time. And in this case, this evolution needed time. For example, how you how this mechanism is working? First of all, country, for example, like it was after the damage in the USSR, take their independence like Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and something like that. Then they choose the regime, for example, democracy. Of course, this regime is not powerful the first day when, when the country is the, when the country when the country take their independence. However, they started to create some strategies for 30 years, for 20 years, for 50 years, or something like that. They started to create some integration between each other, for example, like Eurasian integration, which we are having today between Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and something like that. They are trying to uh, trying to make their economy better or something like that. But all these aspects need the time. And we are talking about that, the, of course, big democracy will be in the first time when they are appearance. However, in the long-term perspective, when the government will choose normal strategy, when the government will try to develop their economy, uh, you know, security, something like that, this big democracy will be like a powerful democracy and we will see that the constant in the future will be like a democracy which we are having in the USA today and something like that. Moral when the, uh, our uh, opponents are talking about that the government can guarantee everything like a comfortable condition for the citizen and something like that. Of course, as I said before, country can't guarantee all the things at the first day because, uh, because uh, it is, it's impossible to uh, give all the better condition when you are, uh, when they are, when they are trying to uh, Find your uh, uh, find your way in this world. Moreover, uh, talking about the opening uh, opening uh, government, they are talking about that strong dictatorship is more stable than uh, uh, than uh, this uh, weak democracy. However, this idea of the strong uh, strong dictators dictatorship and the stability in the strong dictatorship is subjective. Why? Because in the countries which are having this strong, this strong, uh, strong dictatorship, they are shown that for their citizens only why of the only one way of the living and something only one way of the stability, only one way of the security, and only one way of the economic, economical condition. And in this case, we are talking about when people have some ideas, uh, for example, which will be different from the public policy of the government, in this case the government created uh, created some uh, prisons and some that they put their prison because of these people for this prison because these uh, people are going against their uh, ideas and something like that. In our case, we are talk what we are talking about. First of all, we are talking, uh, explained in her speech that the dictatorship is the thing which will fail in the end. Why? First of all, because of the stagnation. We are talking about when the, the, uh, when the um, Country when the policy of the when the government are in, in the strong dictatorship show only subjective way of the developing country of the stability in this country we are talking about that they don't have any motivation to develop because the citizens first of all accept the ideas of their stability they are thinking that it's normal to live in this condition where their rights are damaging and something like that and in this case government don't see any you know, uh, any ways to uh, develop their uh, develop develop uh, their economy because the uh, citizens are satis satisfied by their condition because they accept. However, we, we, we see that there is another uh, part of the citizens which are seeing that the, uh, we have another way to develop and something like that. And they are still, mm, uh, the world understanding is another from the policy of the government. And in this case, we are seeing that we have some revolution, we have this Arabian Spring, and something like that, when citizens, citizens are trying to solve this problem. However, it's very difficult for them. And this is because of this point we are talking about, that it will be uh, much more better to live in this weak democracy rather than in strong dictatorship, which will be in the stagnation, which will lead or, or which will fail in the end, something like that. Moreover, we should understand that the weak democracy also uh, have some benefits and some harms. And the benefits was proposed by the opening opposition. Of course, we are totally agree that it's like a right for the uh, for the choice. It's like certain. Uh, it's like economical uh, benefit, something like that. And 
by, but the heart of a uh, strong dictatorship is only one heart. It's only the time of long-term perspective. We're talking about that all things which are proposed by uh, government, governmental side, like economical benefits, like security and something like that, the, we as a weak democracy can achieve it. All, we, we just need the time, we just need the, uh, some resources, we just need the more um, uh, we just uh, we just um, need to try to try to do our best to achieve all the goals. However, in the dictatorship, we don't have any right to go by another way. We we live in the stagnation where where we see the government which are don't which are um, which are don't go for some connection with the citizens which follow only their policy and something like that. Uh, summarize all uh, our uh, our speech. We're talking about that um, the dictatorship uh, will uh, in in the end of the uh, in the end of the dictatorship the, uh, this region will fa fail. However, the big democracy have uh, the, the opportunity to uh, to uh, develop in the future and to achieve all the goals which are proposed by uh, opening government and opposing government. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys for the debate. It was a bit messy, so <laughs> we were like having to discuss it way longer than we intended. In the end, we came to a unanimous decision. decision. First, I'll give you the call, then I'll give you the explanation of the call, and then I'll go into personal feedback if we have time and they don't call us. If we don't have time, I'll keep in my papers, you can, like, we can do it afterwards, or you can contact me anytime, I can give you the feedback, but hopefully I will manage to to do it in time. I will insert some sort of personal feedback into explanation, so just to be clear. Ooh, oh. <laughs> Ooh I didn't know this is a thing. This is very helpful. Okay, so in the end, uh, we gave the first to open the opposition, we gave the second to closing government, we gave the third to open government, and we gave sadly the fourth to you in the closing opposition. So let me start basically chronologically because it's really uh, important, uh, because that's where the mess and the conception started. First of all, like uh, the conceptions and the definitions, what is the weak democracy and what is the strong dictatorship, should have been way like way more transparent in the first speech, and then like it made the debate way messier than it needed to be. Especially by avoiding to give examples from the present day, really made people go into historic examples and not really explain why is it relevant to the state to the 21st century to 2017, which is where we are debating most of the time. And I think this hurts you guys the most, and you too. So this is where, the, 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 especially uh, the people who had the most historical examples were hurt the most by not defining, by not uh, good definition, and not clear definition, not necessarily good. Uh, you want the ballot? Yeah. Uh, can you give her the ballot? So, uh, the problem is, like, talking about it, it's stable versus unstable, it's uh, rich versus poor, economical, I think they're both true in some way, one flows from the other, you can claim the stability goes with, goes with economical development, the instability comes with non-economical development, and this sort of stuff, but the problem is, like, defining these sort of things. So, what happened then? Uh, the point is, what we get from side of the op closing opening opposition, we get the clear framework what are we trying to prove? We are trying to prove human happiness. And for you, what your burden is said, we are trying to make a world less shit. Like, we don't want another Hitler and this sort of stuff. In that sense, I think it's much more provable than the burden that they put up, put up on their stuff. First of all, because it's really tough to prove why the new Hitler would rise from the 2017 strong, strong dictatorship. And if you want to prove that you needed much more time with these sort of things, you, you much more uh, relied on the examples like Napoleonic Wars, like Hitler, and, and uh, like, guys, if, if your example is Hitler, uh, probably uh, it's not necessarily relevant to 2017. I, like, that, that's what they taught me in my, in my beginner's course. Like, uh, the point is, if you want to tie it, if you want to claim that there will be more wars, you have to give me different examples rather than just pointing to an example. This is what plays the closing opposition as well. So, in the end, what we have from the opening, opening government is not a lot of mechanisms why things actually happen, but a lot of examples what happens. 
So the problem is that that is easily refuted from like actually basically both both oppositions, but we have different problems from closing opposition. When they say like first of all historical examples are not applicable now, so then the burden on you is to prove why is it applicable now and you should have done it in your speeches. But secondly, uh, the, 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 the point that does one flow from, from another. Did the Hitler actually uh, rise because of the weak democracy or because something else? That, that is the point. You have to tell me what is inherently tied to a weak democracy in order for that example to be really strong in this sort of stuff. I'm not sure you can because there's lots of factors and like uh, this, this is the problem with uh, counterfactual debates in this sort of stuff. You don't know what, what like, was the biggest cause of it. But I'm not sure, and you haven't managed to prove to me that weak democracy was the biggest cause of Hitler's rise, and not, for example, economic uh, in development, like being defeated in the First World War or something like that. That, that, is, my, that is my biggest problem with that. The point that you, that, that you start making, it, which is like really important when, when we, in the end, compare you to closing uh, opposition, was that you tried to say that stability means not like stability of government, not a lot of changes in the government side and this sort of stuff. But you never go further and tell me why does this, why is this great? Why, what specifically to having the same government is good? You can obviously talk about long and short term interest or something like that, but you never see that specific comparison. And then, uh, like, like sentence after that, you again uh, start talking about examples and how this is happening. So it will benefit you much more if you have, like, if you just hammer that point about stability within government and how, like, slower decision making or something like that would make it better. So just analyze the point and not add another example because you have already too much examples. Second problem, and that's that's the problem that's the problem that most of you have, is not proving stuff and like stuff like weak democracies don't transition to strong democracies and then them claiming weak democracies do transition to strong democracies but that's the end of extent of analysis that we get from both sides except for in the examples that is that is the problem if if like the examples are not tied and if you don't have internal mechanism of your argumentation this is just a shocking match in terms that they say something you say something back and it's on us to decide what we find more plausible. In the end, that didn't decide this ranking. I will talk to you a little later, but it really decided the top half and like good when, when we take into consideration going up. So opening opposition comes in, sets a different framework, which we don't have to hear the answer to. Like why isn't the happiness the metric, uh, the, the metric that we should the, the, that we should judge this debate by? Why aren't people uh, like feeling less happy when they don't have choices? And they already contest things like. Uh, Economics is not necessarily always enough for people, and you have lots of big, uh, like uh, suicide. Suicide is higher in the like dictatorship rather than in democracies, and people at least have some means to change their lives and this sort of stuff, or at least perceive, and that's why they're happy. That's my point. That needs to be challenged, and that needs to be tackled in order for you to, to come close to to winning against something that is really well analyzed. I don't think I don't think. He, you cannot defeat this sort of thing, and th there is a pretty good clash between closing government and closing uh, opening opposition. But the problem is that nobody actually tackles that specific point, that specific mechanism in which you self-actualize through your choices, and why it's really important for somebody enough to make you do stuff that you don't want. And this is what brings you, what brings you guys to the second place, and not the first place. You have the mechanisms compared, like, like what, what you point out uh, in, in the framing of the, 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 the uh, in differentiation with the open government. Yes, you do bring us new mechanisms, why specifically this works and not just the examples. For example, how do people perceive when they are born into dictatorships who controls everything, your, every part of your life, and you are indoctrinated into it? That is really, like, really clever, clever, clever way to tackle what they're saying. But secondly, how does the economical development happen? And like further explain the things about stability and not changing government that they just said in a sentence and you <coughs> go further. That is, but still, the problem with you is tackling that psychological, the psychological analysis that they're trying to say. If you want to go into the clash with them, and you want, and you specifically said in the framing in the beginning of your speech that you want to clash them uh, on human happiness, and they've already preempted, preemptively rebuffed that the economics is not necessarily enough. You have to say why is it why is it why is it enough or why their mechanisms don't work. That that is my that is my problem. And second problem is like I told you like last time the time management for both of you guys wasn't really well spread on rebuffing for example opening opposition and clashing with them versus propping your material and this sort of stuff. That's why. But 
uh, in terms of these guys, you win because you bring the mechanisms to the debate, which are really necessary for governments to to to, to, to tackle uh, the, the opening of this issue. You go into the, the biggest clash of the debate, but you sadly lose it because you don't tackle the biggest thing there. So, when we bring you guys there, my biggest problem with you is that lots of your analysis depends and really depends on things that were talked about in the opening opposition. And not just like the, the things about like it will eventually happen that we will transition to strong democracy, it doesn't happen overnight. It's something that is already being said, not in the, like th this is basically said in a different words from the yellow speech, when she said it will trans transform into strong democracies sometimes, but it cannot transform into uh, dictatorship. But like the point, uh, the, the, the problem that, that you're making is you're basing your case completely on that. And secondly, is that you are basing your analysis, and you are obviously that can be an extension because they, they didn't focus on that. You can just like try to explain the things that, that they're claiming is not true. But the problem is how you're propping up your, your material is through the same mechanism that you're doing. So you were trying to give me examples why this always failed, why Cuba is awful, why this why Ukraine, uh, what, 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 what is happening in Ukraine, but never give me specific mechanism independently of the examples that you're trying to give, why is, why are you right? Why is this necessarily going to happen? But, and I think you fall into a trap, like most of you, even opening government and you, fall into a trap of being an somewhat absolutist in the terms that you can concede that some, some weak government democracies will transition into strong democracies, and you can concede that some will fail. Problem is that you can put it on a scale and set Okay, but listen, what is the most likely scenario? You don't have to win everything. You can just win the most, the, the majority of things. So you are, I think in uh, being both, both of your teams being afraid to do that make you lose again. But what, uh, it was really close between you, but what decided in the end was two, two things. You, you had a pretty decent responses like international law on them. Why I didn't credit it so much is that your only response was just saying international law, not just explaining how international law works. And me as like average informed citizen cannot add words to your mouth. Like what, what, how does the international community work? How does UN sanction people? Why do people have still still incentive to do so? But you have you, you add some new new things and new material and you clash with opening up. What is the problem with you beating opening government? Is first of all that you have lots of lots more time to prepare than they do, and they don't have any ways to answer to your to, to your case, especially when you don't give them a POI. This is where giving, like, the, this is why taking a POI can sometimes be really important. And like the fact that you haven't engaged in that way m enough with the opening government is something that was detrimental in the end and made it a little bit easier for us to decide that they will take it over you. That, 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 that's my biggest problem. It would be completely unfair if, if, if we, uh, like, especially when you are at the similar level to, to take, to, uh, for, them, uh, for you to take it over them, especially when they cannot answer to anything that you're saying. So, uh, how am I doing on time? I don't think we're in. What? What? Right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so, uh, let, let, let me, okay, okay. Let, let me quickly, quickly go, go through, through some points that, that I, that can be helpful for everybody. So, what I say to both of you, and what, what everybody can benefit, actually, is the problem with structure. You, you, you uh, had the least problem with that. But everybody else was uh, going through the motions, like uh, going through uh, each uh, like sentence that they're trying to say, not necessarily connecting them. And sometimes like doing one argument, then doing second argument, then going back to the first argument and you sort of stuff. It would really benefit you if it was clear where you were going at the beginning of the argument, and secondly, to tie these things together, to, to, to like mash them together in some way. I don't know, like the best way I can help you with that is just to go out with multiple papers and go out uh, like writing one paper, one argument, one like few rebuttals on one paper and not creating things together. Because it's really confusing if you're debating and you have to read small sentences or, or you have to read the, the different argumentation and this sort of stuff. Everybody, everybody had that, they had that problem. Uh, especially when I talked about member of, member of government, you you were really tough sometimes to follow, and it could have like I concentrated uh, and I got your point in the end, but somebody wouldn't maybe, and somebody like that cannot fall that, that cannot fall as fast or something like that wouldn't get everything that you're saying, which can be harmful for you. 
So I would suggest, like, because like I've judged you two times now, I would suggest you maybe slow down, maybe drop one, one or two, one or two points. But first of all, analyze them more, and secondly, speak a little slower in order for people to actually like read into what you're saying and, and really stick into it. Uh, and both of you, bo both of you have problems with time management, like like a, like like the last time. The point is. Uh, you're taking out your stopwatch, I don't know about you. Always take your stopwatch out and always look at it like and like set set uh, an end date. So my rebuttal will finish at 2 2 30. I, I before before you go into the speaking podium, you should at, at least approximately know when do you want to start cropping your material. So I want to start cropping my material at 2 30, not 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 later. You started doing that at four minutes. That, that is pretty late in order to like compare it or, or, or do something. Or if you want to prioritize rebuttal, okay, I will dedicate one minute to closing opposition, three minutes to open the opposition, or something like that. That is like in terms of strategy, maybe this can help you just dedicating that time before you go onto the stage, stage <laughs> before you go into the like speaking booth or something like that.